Hello, it's Jay here again and welcome to another tutorial. In this lesson, we're going to begin with the on GUI function. But before we do that, I just want to come first to the void start. And I'm going to come here and as I explained in the last video, I've got the day phase set at night which is when I want mine to start, but I actually want mine to start at the breaking of dawn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it set at night, but I'm going to set my hours, minutes and counter to begin just a second before we hit the dawn start time. So the dawn start time equals six. So I'm going to come here underscore hours equal five close the line off straight into the comments hours equals five on start up and we'll just continue on for the minutes so minutes equals 59 straight into the comments exactly the same as before minutes equals 59 on startup and we don't do seconds we do the counter instead as we all know we set the seconds to be equal to the counter here so let's just come back and I'm going to set that to 59 as well and miss the space there and again straight in to the comments 59 on startup so we'll just save that off there we'll come back to the scene here's my script as you can see they're all zeroed out at the minute in the inspector let's hit play and let's see, it started just a second before my dawn start time. So if you missed that, just uh, watch the hours and minutes here. Again, if I hit play, and there we go. So now we have that in place. And please remember, you can start in whichever phase you like and at whatever time you wish but this is what I'm going to use so now let's come down to the void on GUI and we're just going to have some simple GUI in place at the moment we will probably make it more elaborate at a much later date but it's just so um, we don't have to keep looking in the inspector all the time especially if we have other game objects selected later on we can actually have something on screen which we can actually see the script working so with that said let's just get a few labels in place so GUI dot label and open brackets and of course of type new rect we'll open brackets again and I'm going to say screen dot width and I'm going to say minus 50 comma 5 so the screen width or the screen width minus 50 with a height or at least five down from the very top of the screen here so screen position on width screen position on height comma so with that so let's come up to the top and we'll create two new variables public and these can be of type int and we'll say gui um yes what shall we call it public in let's call it underscore gui width and let's keep this simple we'll make it equal to 100 for now we'll probably come back and alter it as i said at a later date but let's just make that 100 and we'll say 
defines GUI label width. Let's just copy that and we'll paste that in below. And we want to change it to underscore GUI height. Let's make this equal to 20. And I think that should do us. So here you go, two public ints, one for width, one for height. Width is 100 and the height is 20. So we have the position on screen. And now we can say the underscore GUI width, comma, and the GUI height. So with that done, let's close brackets there. We'll say comma. And in the speech marks, I'm going to say days. In fact, let's just say day. And then we'll say plus underscore days. And then we'll close the line off, or close brackets, and then close the line off. So we're drawing a label at this screen position. This is the width and height of the GUI itself. We're going to print day plus the number of days in our counter here. So before we comment it, let's go and test it out. Let's hit play. And bear with me one moment. I forgot to save that off. Let's come back and hit play again. So there we go, day zero. So let's stop that there. And let's come back to the void start. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to make days equal one. We'll close the line off. Days equal one on startup. And let's just have a space. So I'm going to put a space here after the word day, but before the second speech mark. Let's save that off there. And we'll hit play. And I think that looks a lot better. And of course, if we alter our days. And that's how it's going to look on screen. Again, we'll stop that there. And let's put this into the comments. I'm actually just going to put the comment above the line, actually, on this occasion. Create GUI label let's just say to display number of days and of course if you want to make your comment more elaborate and, and um, include more information please go ahead and do so but I'll just put that for now and we need to create another GUI label so GUI dot label open brackets of type new rect and we'll open brackets again and let's have a look here um i think we can copy all of this i and let's paste that in and we'll just alter this to 25 so where well, we have 50 here we'll just change that to 25 and we'll close brackets there so again creating a new GUI label at this position on screen with just a variance in the height we'll keep the GUI itself at the same width and height and we'll come here after the close brackets and we'll say comma and then we want to display our hours and space plus and what I'm going to do I'm going to put speech marks in and I'm just going to use the colon symbol 
So let's come back and we'll say plus our minutes and we'll then plus again and the colon again in the speech marks we'll say plus our seconds so it's fairly obvious what we're doing here we're going to display a clock beneath the number of days so we're printing hours the number of hours we've got then we're printing a colon before we print the minutes colon again before we display the seconds so let's just save that off and we'll go and test it out so we'll hit play and there we can see it's working as you can see it started just a second before six it is now counting up past six o'clock but this does not look right the minutes so that's a fairly easy fix and I'm going to come here above this line and I'm going to say if open brackets underscore minutes is less than 10 we'll close brackets we'll open and we'll enter and close again and we'll come inside and what we're going to do is copy this line here so we'll paste that in let's get rid of the empty line there and what we want is if we come here after colon plus and we have minutes here and we're going to say zero and another plus sign so if the minutes are less than 10 we're going to just display this extra zero here where the minutes are and we can come here and we can just say else and in fact let I'll just have that in and we'll save that off there so now let's go and have a look how this runs now so we'll hit play now as you can see because our minutes are less than 10 we display an extra zero in front here and if I just bump the minutes up to say 5 you can see 605 but let's come to 10 and then a number above 10 let's say 25 minutes and I think that's closer to the readout which you would normally get on a digital watch so this is just here for the moment I'll stop that there just so we can see something working on screen especially if we end up having to select other game objects later we can still see the time of day working but um, for now that will uh, do us quite fine so let's put in some comments and I'm going to say here I'm going to come above if minutes is less than 10 display our clock and we can just say with extra zero as always you can with yours any way your you like so let's come here I'll just come above the else and yeah, we'll just say else just display our clock. And we'll save that off there. And I think we'll leave it here for this video. So we've got a few more things in place. We've got a couple of public ints. We've got our time and day in the void start. 
and we can also see something on screen now as well within the editor with our on GUI function so I think this is a good point to leave it I hope you enjoyed this video I hope to see you next time and until then as always bye for now